Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Professor Keating, I understand that the local United Auto Workers chapter of the UAW 4811 <coughs> voted to strike in protest that uh, your university and the police removed the anti-Semitic, anti-Israel protesters and their encampment. Um, the, the, the UAW alleged that workers' rights were violated in their handling of the anti-Israel protests and uh, the individuals were, um, even though these individuals were violating policies, the union is demanding amnesty for the employees and students to basically fight for their right to be anti-Semitic, I guess. Um, Professor Keating, are you aware of the UAW strike on the campus? Yes, sir, I am aware of it. In fact, uh, our teaching assistants in my classes, and I, I teach, I've taught thousands of students over the years, they are effectively forced to be members of the United Auto Workers Union uh, as, as part of their contract and their collective bargaining agreement. So, so even, though it's a, it, they, even though it's a university, they're forced, they're, is it a public university or are they? Yes, it's a public university. So is this a government system and yet people are being for, compelled to pay, think, pay, be a member? I, I believe that, uh, I can't speak uh, if they're literally forced to do it. I know that you have to resign, and in fact, many of the graduate student teaching assistants submitted their uh, testimonials to me. In fact, had to meet with their unit representative in order to resign from the union actively based on their partisan advocacy for um, the in support of the anti-Israel demonstrators receiving full rights. Again, why they want to receive full rights to a diploma from a university that they claim is genocidal, complicit, et cetera, et cetera, and hold uh, constant boy boycotts against is beyond me. However, I should point out that uh, none of the students that I teach, which I remind you are physics students, astronomy students, et cetera, including devout Muslims uh, who work with me and for me, and I've, I've always had a, a proud tradition of educating people from around the world, they refuse to strike, and they, in fact, they told me, uh, we stand with Israel. And uh, for, for them to be, sort of have to proactively tell me that, because otherwise I might have had to uh, you know, take over all their responsibilities. And there's a faculty organization which is not officially sanctioned by the university. They call themselves the San Diego Faculty Association that, again, was encouraging uh, protests, encouraging walkouts, encouraging the graduate students who are employees. And in fact, one employee of the union, uh, a teaching assistant, broadcast to his undergraduate students that they have a right, a moral obligation to, to protest the university's complicit, complicit nature with the activities of Israel in, in Gaza and beyond. So he was using an, an intimidation tactic on the students whose grades he's partially responsible for to advocate for political speech. That's appalling. So the, I, what were the policies of the university that they were violating on campus? Because be, I, I, you know, if, if pro-Israeli students were, were protesting, uh, and violating these policies, one might expect there to be equal treatment. What were the policies that were being violated? So, so these were uh, encouragement to uh, to not great to cease work. They were operating. Uh, the, the graduate students did go on strike two years ago to advocate for higher wages, and, and as you know, living in La Jolla is not a, a, an inexpensive endeavor. So, I, I support you know their right to advocate for for. Right. So, this was an unauthorized strike in the sense that they weren't authorized by their own union rules to go on strike for political purposes. They can go on strike for whatever reason. So did they, they violated a labor practice? That was the consent. I, I have to defer to legal experts, but I believe that was, the, that was the decision. In fact, California state courts ruled that that strike was no longer uh, supported, was in violation of the union's contract. So th they did go back to work eventually. Uh, do you think most Members of the UAW un understand that there's a there's a segment of their of their labor union that is that is actively making sure that people have a right to be anti-Semitic. I think in uh, they claim to represent 58,000 members of the University of California. As Congressman Kiley said, it's an enormous employer in the state of California. That's not an insignificant fraction of the employment of the state of California, and yet I don't believe they represent more than a few percent. Well, and what I find striking is that, uh, you know, they're supposed to represent all workers' rights, and yet did you see any activity that they were um, expressing that indicated that they cared about the Jewish students and, wor and workers? No, in fact, uh, one, one graduate student teaching employee, <clears throat> she stated that she met with the union organizing unit uh, command, uh, unit chair, and they, they said that we sometimes advocate for political reasons. 
Thank you. Um, my time has expired.